tuned in to G5 Jeff TV, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the share button as you come on in. I got not one, but two special guests on the line with me today. Manager extraordinaire out of Iowa. Heard him on the show plenty of times. Mike Patterson in the building. What's going on? What's going on, G5? Thank you for having me back. I'm back home. It feels good to be back. No problem. And guest number two, I guess I can say welterweight, junior welterweight, out of Iowa, Jason Phillips. What's going on, bro? Yo, what's up, man? Appreciate you having me. No problem. You know your family over here. So, listen, let's get right down to it. For the people that don't know, Jason Phillips just fought. September 19th, and it ended up in a draw against Chris Bruce. Now, for the people that are not familiar, I did an interview with Chris Bruce uh, recently. If you haven't heard the interview, definitely go check that out. But I had to get these two guys on the channel to respond to the actual Chris Bruce interview. Mike, I'm going to start with you first um, because you get the listeners a little bit of insight of what happened behind the scenes before the fight even took place. Oh man, that's that's my favorite part. I want to thank everybody that came out and supported us because we, you know, we're from Iowa. We're from Iowa, but we never been to Clinton. <laughs> you know, I never been there before. So this right. was like this was kind of like a road, a semi road bout, if you want to say. But the fans welcomed us with open arms. They welcomed Jason with open arms. Um, we were of color and a mainly Caucasian audience, and they still had love for us, you know. And this time with everything with the George Floyd and COVID, you know what I mean? Like it could have, it could have been a little bit of racial tension there, but it wasn't none of that. They show love, and they also know who won that fight. <laughs> <laughs> now that's definitely what I want to get into. Uh, for the listeners, again, uh, Jason Phillips versus Chris Bruce ended up being a draw. One judge had a 39-37 for Jason Phillips. The other two had it uh, 38-38. Uh, Jay, um, how did you feel going into the fight uh, with it being a, a fight at 147? How, how did you feel physically? Um, I felt good. I made the weight easy. I was walking around in, like, 147 for, like, two months. Okay. That's good. And during the fight, with him being so tall, um, did it take you a long time to get adjusted, or did, did things go the way you expected? Yeah, it took me a minute to get adjusted because I never really spot out. We really didn't have, like, tall components. So, uh, and when I did, I couldn't make the points out of work, so the scheduling was just all bad and stuff. But. It took me a minute, but about the second, say second round, I felt good. Mm. Okay. I see that. I and see for the, the people body. that, for the people that's listening, Chris Bruce is six two. Yeah. So every bit of six two, and Jay, you're about five seven. No, I'm about five 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 six. Five 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 six. So that's a big difference in terms of height. So, did you feel like you won the fight, Jay? Um, yeah, I feel like I was landing the harder, the more high catching punches. And I was, I was not gonna lie, I wasn't that busy in the fight. Cause he was like, mm -hmm. he was doing real good at keeping his distance, using his length, popping the jab. But I felt like I was throwing more combinations and more power punches, and I was pretty much landing when I wanted to, but. I'm not gonna argue with the judges or the fans or not. Right. Did you um have you watched the fight again since the fight happened? Yeah, I've watched it like a thousand times. <laughs> <laughs> Me now, too, Jay, I watched it like a thousand times too, no cap. Now, Jay, do you think you do you think you won all of the rounds, three or four? No, I think I think it was uh Two two or three one. Something around here either way. 
Eastern class. I think he won the first, and then the other two rounds, the second and third were mine, and then the fourth round could win either way. Okay. So your opinion is pretty uh, consistent with a lot of other people's in terms of rounds. Mine, uh, mine was different than that. I ain't, I ain't gonna no say. What, what was yours? What was yours? Man? I had one J, two J, three Bruce, four J. I right. had, I had Bruce winning the third, and like Jason threw a flurry at the end of the third. Which kind of narrowed that gap. Like at first it was a solid gap; it was his round. But then that flurry at the end it hurt him, and then he's like he's he's finishing the round in a defensive fetal position against the ropes. And as the bigger man, I don't look good to the judges. So I, you know, I kind of give him that round, but the edge, you know what I mean? That the gap, Jason closed that. But then the fourth, at the bell, he throws a nice looping Fred Thomas left hook. And the land's solid. So I'm like, ah, you know what I mean? Like, I got to give him the fourth, too. Like, <laughs> right. right. A lot of people watch that fight. Um, you know, being in Clinton, Iowa, and the climate that we're in as far as, you know, the pandemic, COVID, and everything, you would think that this fight wouldn't get that much buzz. But this fight got a lot of buzz, a lot of buzz. Um now, obviously, I wasn't there in person for the fight, but after the fight, Mike texted me and was like, yo, Jay got robbed. He got robbed. He got robbed. <laughs> and I was, like, I was like, okay, I need to see the fight. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, I need to see the fight. So Mike made me wait about maybe about a week <laughs> before he released the fight. I'm like, Mike, send me the fight. Send me the fight. He it was a full week? Send me the fight. It was a full week, and he finally drops it. He finally drops it on Instagram, and I went and seen the fight. And, Jay, just to let you know, um, due to the channel being international, we've had different opinions on your fight. Um, We had people from Thailand um, actually score your fight. The U.K. Big shout-out to Scott Lang. Big shout-out to Scott Lang. Big shout out to Shane. Um, so we've had people in different countries actually score your fight. Jay, is a is a rematch something that you're um that you're gunning for or do you wanna just move on to different opponents? I mean, we can always do a rematch. I'm I'm never judging nobody, but um it's, I'm not gonna wait forever because it's my money to get paid. Oh, now he's gonna put the pressure on me. I'm the manager. <laughs> oh no, because I'm no, because I'm coming. I'm coming straight to you, Mike. I uh, knew you. What did you say? Like, yeah, so how do you? Why y'all do the buzz, huh? <laughs> hey, listen. We are not gonna press the gas. You you under the bus. We we gonna, we gonna not press the gas. Listen, Mike. How do you feel about a rematch uh, with Chris Bruce? I would 100 percent support that because Jason can beat this guy. Like, I heard the interview. I heard his excuses about him not training and things of that nature. And I respect that. You know, honesty comes first, especially in this this dangerous sport that we're in. Because truth be told, we didn't really put 100% into training camp this fight, you know. Um, Truth be told, we didn't get, you know, the proper sparring and, you know, the right strength and conditioning as much as we should have. But I'll I'll hurt right here real quick. Go ahead. Give me that. I feel like I could stop him. I heard, I heard him multiple times. See? Mm. Mm. I, I know he could have stopped After the second round, I know Jay could have put him, put him down easily. He just wasn't letting it go because, you know, for whatever reason, he was going through what he was going through. But in the rematch, he's going to sleep. I want 100%. Chris Bruce to do whatever he's got to do and train with whoever got to train with up there, except my brother Hitman. Anybody but him. <laughs> anybody but him. Go ahead, any Jamal James, anybody but him, because right. we got everything we need here. All we got to do is put the time in the gym. I'll go ahead, put him to sleep, put him under the ice, and then come back. And then, you know, have a party or something. <laughs> now, I, 
Now, I, I did want to uh, address something that Chris Bruce said in the uh, interview I did with him. He he said that when he got the call for the fight, he said it was about three weeks prior to the fight. And he also oh, said that he – Say it again, Jay. you hear that, Jay? That's about when I got the call, too. Okay. I got a story for that. Can I tell a story for that? Okay, go ahead, Rock. And this is this is behind the scenes, behind the scenes, behind the scenes. Okay. So when the fight was announced, we were having internal problems within our camp. I'm not gonna throw no names out there, I'm not gonna point no fingers. Because okay. the issue was over now, you know, we're going forward now. But okay. there were some problems within our camp. Big problems, serious problems. And those problems resulted in us getting pulled off the card. So we went from fighting to not fighting to big boom at the gym to everything settles, and now we're fighting again. So technically, air quote, air quote, Bruce isn't really lying when he got the call. We kind of got a call before that, but then we got removed and then reinstated. You know, some other people, some other fighters were removed and not reinstated. Jason was picked by the promoter to be on this card. You know, he was removed and re-picked again. So technically Bruce was telling the truth, but he got the same call we got, and he looked at the up. same up. time? Around yeah. the three-week mark? Okay. Same time. Yeah. He okay. looked us up and told the promoter, yeah, man, I'm coming for war. I'm coming to kill. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. So word got back to me being the manager. And I ain't going to cut. Like, I was a little bit nervous. Like, this guy's 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, you know, we ain't fought in like three months. You know, Jason just had a baby. I'm kind of nervous a little bit. You know, I'm hearing this rough and tough Rambo knock him out, you know, type of guy. Right. Then I get a whole nother script talking about he's going to pull out of the fight. He realized that Jason fought in February, and now he's, you know, he's getting cold feet. So I'm like, what? You just called me talking about, you know what I mean? Like, what? So I'm scratching my head, G5. I don't know what the hell to believe. Is he a killer? Is he not? Is he coming to fight? Is he not? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Jason, meanwhile, just keep me calm and composed like I, how he do. It's in the gym grinding, grinding, putting in work. I ain't seen this side of Jay in a couple fights, so I'm, I'm loving it. Fight day comes up, he makes it. I'm shocked. I'm very, very shocked. He makes weight. I'm shocked about that. He gets in the ring, and I don't see nothing that's impressive. Nothing. I see nothing that he's doing that makes me, you know, like, man, Jay, you got to step it up. Like, no, like, he's, he's just sticking behind the guy. <laughs> that's all he's really doing, you know. So then round two come along, and then Jason start walking the bigger man down. He start putting his hands on him, landed solid shots. Crowd start going crazy. I'm like, oh, Jason, you can hurt this guy. Like, seriously. Like, so all that, you know, I guess I was I was overestimated to be underestimated. I guess I'll say that. Very, very underestimated. Uh, Jay, looking back at the fight, um, what do you think you – should have done differently, I guess, to make it look more convincing to the judges, if anything. Just throw more punches. Just throw more now, punches. now, when you say throw more punches, if you fighting a guy that was six two and you're five six, was it more body shots um, in terms of uh, more punches or just more combinations? It's more combination because I could, I was landing body shots when I wanted to. I guess was throwing like four or three punches at a time, but I should have been throwing more flurries and combinations. Okay, is that something that you're just trying to add to your game? Period. Not you know just looking back at this Chris Bruce fight. Is that something that you're just trying to uh, do more as a fighter? Yeah. So um, after I fight, I've been. I've been in the gym a lot when I go for work at night and stuff. Okay. And I've been watching a lot of boxing, so I've been like, you know, like experimenting. Mm-hmm. Trying to find like, trying to put it all together. All um, right. Next time I fight, it's going to be uh, different for sure. Okay. Now, you said you've been watching uh, 
watching different fight like different fights? Like have you been watching any fighters in particular? Um I've been watching a lot of no, Whitaker. Mm. Um, okay. And uh some Canelo lately too. Okay. And those are two really good names for for this reason. Um the two different styles. They are, yes. They are both very good defensively, but their styles are different defensively. Uh Pernell Whitaker is more for mm-hmm. his jab and defense and combination. And I watch Canelo for his patience and his defense and body shots. Yeah. And you explained that perfect because that's what they bring to the table. And the one thing that I can say to you is when both of those guys are on a defensive, A, they transition from defense to offense very, very quickly. And number two, they when they're playing defense, they don't ever take themselves out of position offensively. And I think those are the two main things that you can add to your game um, that's going to make you more effective just in your career, period. And if a rematch with Chris Bruce is going down, that's something that you're going to have to do um, against a guy that's 6-2, more combinations and um, transitioning from defense to offense. Um, yeah. Mike, quick question for you. I'm ready. <laughs> as far as Chris Bruce is concerned, now, when he said he got the call, he said he was not in the gym prior to getting the call. He actually said he was on his couch watching, uh, playing Call of Duty. That's, that's what he doing. That's, that's what he. Man, man. When I heard the interview, I was like, "We doing the same shit." Like, <laughs> he, he, said he, right. he said he was on his couch. Right. He said he was on his couch playing Call of Duty. It got the call for the fight, but he said he was not in the gym prior to that. So it was like he got the call and he just started going to the gym. Um, did you get any? Information on Chris Bruce prior to the fight in terms of, um, like his fighting style, things like that. Like outside of the height, like we all knew he was 6'2. Anything about his fighting style did you find out about prior to the fight? His style, yes. I've seen some tape on him, but it was old. It was a little bit old. So I figured that if you add that to what the hype was, because the hype was he was supposed to be the bigger guy. That's just supposed to come in and just dominate Jay. You know, and then I've never seen Jason fight a guy of that statue before. You know, we're two fights in the pros. Like, we've never really fought somebody that's over six feet. So I was kind of nervous. You know, I was I was a little bit nervous. But then as the fight started to play out, there was nothing to be nervous about. You know, it's not like we're fighting Lenny Slew with somebody that's a puncher and with the height, you know what I mean, or – or, or somebody like that, but his, he was more evasive than anything. So I'm like, well, damn, Jay, go ahead and stalk this guy down. You know, you're, you're tearing his body up. You're, you're throwing hooks. They're landing. Every time he receives a shot, he kind of does this uh, little frailing thing, and that's not good for a guy with that type of statue. You know, he's six feet. He's supposed to be able to bang with us and keep us off of him. You know what I mean? But... I guess, you know, if he wants to say he, he just got off the couch and he was playing Call of Duty, that's cool. I hope the rematch that, you know, ain't no more Call of Duty because you're going down. All right. Jay, how was, how was, uh, how would you rate, uh, Chris Bruce Power? Did you have a, a little power? Did you feel anything in that fight? Um, no. <laughs> I mean, I'm, to me, nobody really hits hard. I've never been hit too hard. Right. And I was just walking down, so the power didn't affect me too much, obviously. Okay. He wasn't really throwing no hard punches anyway, so I think he tried to throw a couple uppercuts or hooks or something, but he missed. So he just picked his hits up to his jab. And, yeah. I remember Jay saying that after the fight, too. He said um, he was waiting on Bruce to switch his punches up. 
but it, there was nothing else besides the jab and the occasional right hand. I'm like, yeah, you're right. So right. From, from where I was sitting at in four rounds, I've seen three different punches. Mainly a lot of jabs, a couple of right hands, and the uppercut, but the uppercut missed. Jason's defense was on point, so, like, that wasn't landing. Now, yeah, he, he did a good job, I would say probably 80 to 85 percent of his punches were, were jabs. Am I, am I correct on that, fellas? Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, I would say the majority of his shots was jabs, but he kept the jab pumped. Like, no, yeah, he did. He did. no doubt about that. Like, But as a guy 6'2", you're supposed to keep the jab pumping. Yeah. So, and I told him that. Don't have a mean right hand behind it. That that's that's true. Um, but but you know uh, we we see that from some of the greats, and you know Chris Bruce just started his career, so I, I wasn't expecting anything crazy from uh, Chris Bruce in the fight. But I think it definitely warrants a rematch. Um, Jay, I've I've had at least thirty people watch the fight. Had thirty people watch the fight. I've probably got, I mean, is is like right down the middle between a draw three one for you or three one for Chris Bruce. Like, I mean, it's like split down the middle. Um, now. Jay, is there anything that you want to get off your chest as far as uh, Chris Bruce is concerned? Because he he's definitely going to hear the center of it. He's definitely going to hear it. Um, not really. Just rematch. If they want to get a rematch, I'm going to get a rematch for him. But I'm not a person that's about to just sit and dwell and wait for one person. Okay. Okay. Mike? I, I don't have to throw you. I don't have to throw you no. I don't have to throw you no alley you for this. Hey, I got hit is twice it, in the same light. Ain't that is, is, is there anything you would like to say to Chris Bruce or his people? You was chatting with in the crowd during the fight. Oh man, no, I think that was. Uh, hey Jay, that was a lot. Jay, were you able to hear that? Yeah, I was hearing bits. Of, like when I'm, at, when I'm boxing in the ring, I really don't hear people besides my coaches, but. <laughs> I could hear them arguing back and forth during the fight, and I was like laughing my head. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That is funny. It's extra funny too. Like when you actually watch the fight and, and just listen to them in the background, I'm like, it was like the fight within the fight. Like it was Jay, it yeah. was Chris Bruce people, and then it was just Mike by himself just gapping with like four other people. Like it was hilarious. Uh, I was actually in their section. Like, I do that all the time with Jason's fight, and I I don't do it intentionally. It's just it's a better view for the camera. So that was his section, and I was in their spot. But, hey, I don't give a damn. Like, it's mine now. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's oh, yeah, cool as hell, though. Like, I would, matter of fact, if, if, if they're hearing this interview, let's put some money on Let's make things interesting. I got $500 to say Jason stops me. And I match whatever they put on the table. Brother, cousin, uncle, coach, it doesn't matter. I got five hundred dollars say Jason Stoffy. In Minnesota. On the record for G five Jeff T V. <laughs> is it is that all you gotta say to them? That's all I gotta say. Cause I mean he was talking about putting some money up and I was like, you know what? That's a good idea. That's a really I mean, we're at a casino. We're all over, you know, we're all legal to, to gamble and everything. So, Jason's fighting, his brother is fighting. Let's, let's, let's have our own little side a little bit, you know, just like how you do at the crowd table, you know, just make a little side bet. So I'll put my bet out right there right now. I got half a stack to say Jason put him to sleep. And if I can get things the way I want it to, like, I got my fingers crossed. I can't see that, but I got my fingers crossed. Okay. If I can get a full camp, with this killer from Rock Island, his name is Rashawn Lee. If I can get a full camp with him, I say Jason stops him in two. Because the style that Chris Bruce um, distributes in the ring is a very, very mediocre style of Rashawn. Rashawn is a killer, man. Like, oh, my God, I can't wait till he goes to the pro. Y'all, y'all watch out for that boy. 
but he's right across the river from us. So if we can get eight to maybe even four weeks with him, Jason's going to put him to sleep quick, really quick, because all that adapting that Jason does in the ring, he'll have about 20 to 30 rounds of adapting with Rashawn. So, yeah, I got I got half a stack on that. Shout-out to the Rams and Sims. Big shout-out to the Rams. That's, that's, uh, that's some big talk there, Mike. That's, that's some big talk. Um, I'm I'm pretty sure the people want to know is is, is this half a stack going to be cold cash or you you a credit guy? Uh, well, you know, <laughs> I might have to you know pull out my old handy dandy checkbook Do people still take that. AJ, can I write a check? AJ, let me find out he's writing bad checks, man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. I think the the most important thing right now is to let the promoters know that they're sitting on a gold mine right now as far as this rematch is concerned. Because out of every fight they had on the card, Jason Phillips and Chris Bruce fight got the most attention. Post fight. It was some good fighters on the card. Listen, it was some good fighters on the card. And it's no disrespect to them. It's no disrespect to them. But Chris Bruce and Jason Phillips was marketed after the fight the old school way. Word of mouth. The new school way. Social media and just allowing people to see the fight. With the fight being in Clinton, Iowa, there's no TV station out there actually showing the fight. So, Mike, with you actually showing the fight on social media and, and being nice enough to send it to me, and I was able to put, you know, a little, you know, put the G5 sauce on it and, you know, and get it out there. We've had a whole bunch of people watch this fight where under normal circumstances, they wouldn't even have heard of this fight, let alone seen it. So, yeah. right. So these promoters need to know, and we, we talking to Mr. Cox and, and, and Brandon B. I, I, I can, I can say names. You know, big shout out. We talk, but big shout out to both of them. Big shout out to Brandon B. Big shout out to Mr. Cox. Um, anybody bringing boxing business to the quiet cities, you know, you, you know, you gotta, gotta salute them. The, the people in Minnesota, they, they, they talking about this rematch. They, they talking about this rematch. Uh, part of the reason is our, our brother in arms, uh, Mr. Cruz Hitman Stewart. Big shout out to him. Big um, shout out to the big bro. And there's a lot of people in Iowa that want to see it as well. Um, so we, we're putting the pressure on Brandon B. Yes, yes, we're putting the pressure on Brandon B. Mike, you don't have to say anything, Jay. You don't have to say anything because I know y'all in communication with him, but I'm not. So I don't have no time for Brandon B. You know what I'm saying? I'm putting it here. He's going to pull the message. I'm putting it, listen, I'm putting it out there. I'm putting it out there. Brandon B., we need to make this, we, we need to make this happen. I'm in communication with Chris Bruce. I'm pretty sure Chris Bruce, uh, you know, you know, he'll, he'll do everything that needs to be done from his end. You know, make sure everything is professional, make sure everything is right. And the people want to see it. The, the people want to see it. And this could definitely be a main event or a co main event on one of your cars. And that's how much demand is out there for this fight. I mean, you have two different states. That'll be coming together. So if it's in Minnesota, Iowa's coming to Minnesota. If it's in Iowa, Minnesota's coming to Iowa. It's really that simple. I like it. But we need to make we need to make that happen. Jay said he's down. Chris Bruce is definitely down. Uh, Mike got five hundred dollars for whoever. I'm hey, taking hey, all Mike. Money. Hey Mike, it better not be them them starter checks neither from the bank that don't have your name <laughs> on it. <laughs> well, 
with the fake address and shit. You know them starter checks they give you when you first open up, open up your bank account? Yeah, it's got it's the just, fake address on it. The fake yeah, name it got the it. fake. Yeah, no name, no nothing. <laughs> like it just got paid for the order of, and that's it. <laughs> Mike, will have a, <laughs> Mike will have a bunch of those. They're going to hate me in Minnesota when they take this to the bank. Don't <laughs> <say you. laughs> nah, but they're going to walk out with the victory, though, so it's all good. I, I can't be that shit. <laughs> Mike will have a backup plan, though. He he got the uh, starter checks ready for you Minnesota cats. <laughs> for sure, man. <laughs> but listen, we gonna we gonna close it out right there. Um, I definitely had to get you guys on um, to talk about this Chris Bruce fight and the possibility of a rematch. But uh, first, Jason Phillips, we appreciate you jumping on. You know, busy got the yeah. got the baby and everything, so we really really appreciate your time, bro. Yeah, anytime. Jay, give get them your social media before you jump out. Uh, Facebook and Instagram J- is just my name, Jason Phillips. Um, what else I use? I mean, that's it. I got a Twitter, but I don't really get on it. Okay. And yeah, Facebook, Instagram, Jason Phillips. Okay. And Mike Patterson, we always appreciate you uh, being on the channel. Uh, do you want to give your social media out, sir? Yes, I appreciate having me back on the channel. It's been too long, man. Yes, yes, yes indeed. Yes, indeed. Y'all can follow me on Instagram at MikePat09. You can follow Jason at Jason Phillips underscore 23. You can find the big bro Cruise, Cruise Hitman Stewart at Cruise Stewart Boxing, 1-2 Boxing, Young Hefe for T. Woods. He'll be fighting November 7th, which is my birthday. Keep an eye out for that. We got lots and lots of action coming out of Iowa. Lots of action. Not to mention, the Brochino Destroyer Hill will be fighting on November 28th. So it's just uh, keep your eye out for Iowa, man. You're going to be seeing us on the rankings real soon. We're coming in a way. Oh, man. How could I do that? How could I do that? Big Bro Double D is going to be fighting on November 28th. And I think... I don't want to let the cat out the bag, but I, I believe Coach Fred's going to get back in there, too. Am I right, Jim? Oh, man. We got a Fred uh, Simon sighting? I heard, but I'm not sure if it's official. Uh-oh. I, let me shut up. Let me shut up. Let me just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, talking too much. I'm talking too much. That's, that's fine. That's fine. On behalf of G5 Jeff TV, Jason Phillips, Mike Patterson, we are out. <laughs>